What is up guys welcome to a brand new video of another review of the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and this time it's gonna be about the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Bloody Wine Expansion Pack but before we get started how did you like that intro tell me in the comments below how did you like that intro it took me about two hours to complete that intro or to basically edit them compile all the videos together not counting how long it took me to actually record every single episode that led up to those parts in the video anyways in today's video we'll be talking about uh, we'll be basically covering and reviewing the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Blood and Wine expansion and this uh, I'm gonna be covering four things in this in this video one is gonna be The graphic and basically the whole atmosphere and the this and this expansion because I can I can I can go on and on about how amazing the the basically the 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 entire environment of the witch I mean the graphics I mean we're gonna be talking about that also Secondly, we're going to be talking about the story, how well this story was done, how how CD Projekt Red actually outdid themselves. I have to, I mean, hands down, they did an incredible job on the last expansion pack to end this game. I mean, I can't tell you how how good was this story and how, how it was actually a great way to actually end The Witcher 3. I'll also be talking about my rating in the game. What's my basically how 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 will I rate this game? I mean, was this was this expansion pack up to standards? Was it something I should recommend people to buying? And lastly, I'll be talking about if you should pick up this game for the price that it's selling right now, or if you should pick it up even for sixty dollars and get all of its expansion packs as well. So with that with that said, let's get right into the first topic. So for the first talk, we'll be talking about basically the entire environment of this game. Now I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, uh, you're going to see myself repeating myself a couple times, but that's because I cannot, I cannot emphasize how, how great this game was. So with the environment, I mean Tucson. I hope I'm pronouncing this properly. Tucson was a, I mean, it was unbelievably or unbelievable. I mean, it was amazing. That's all I'm gonna have to say. I mean, the the scenery, the way the the way the whole place was, and the colors that stood out. I mean, it looked it looked so real that you wish that you could actually find a place very similar to that place and actually live there. I mean, in, that, that's in my opinion. Other people might just see it and go, eh. But in my opinion, it was amazing. I mean, the scenery in the background, you had these nice peak mountains with snow on top. You had this, uh, 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 there was this one place in the map that I wasn't ever able to go. It wouldn't allow you, but it was like, I, I call it Twin Peaks, where basically it was two mountains that kind of peaked at each other. And it's like, it looks like you can actually jump from the top of that little mountain to the next little top of the mountain. It was amazing. I mean, the way the vineyards were set, I mean, the way the grass, I mean, the way, the, I mean, the water itself was just crystal blue like I mean this this map in my opinion it basically tramples Skelligod I mean Novograd I mean White Orchard uh, I mean White Orchard okay maybe White Orchard maybe you can stand up to White Orchard but maybe even even the witch I, I forgot the place was it Caramorn I believe it was Caramorn I mean this map I'm probably gonna be spending more of my time on this on this um on this basically location on the map than I would in any other any other map on the Witcher on, on the Witcher game I mean I, I 
I cannot express how amazing, I mean, just look at the day and night, the, the day and night cycle, I mean, you can be up, you can have it during the day, it looks fantastic, at night, at night, oh my gosh, at night, it's amazing, I, can, I mean, I wish I lived somewhere like, like that, where I can look up and I can see the stars as clearly as I did in this map in Tucson basically you can see the stars you can even see shooting stars going across I mean the night is so clear I mean it's so amazing I mean you can be standing on top of a mountain you can see in the distance the castle and the lights how how actually a castle will actually light up when it's nighttime you see the little lights the little stuff from the windows the torches I mean you can it's a it's a it's a, it's, it's a fantastic view I have to say a fantastic view if I can actually find some place like that and Find a place actually that is very similar. I mean, maybe not a castle, but maybe the sky clear that you yeah, can see all the thousands of stars up in the sky. I mean, you have that. I mean, you can't feel the breeze, but you can imagine how the fresh breeze cools in at night and how it can be somewhat relatively hot during the day, but at night, boy, that breeze just blows and you can actually hear the rustling of the leaves. I mean, I can't tell you how, the environment, the monsters, I mean, you have monsters that are like very fitting for a place like this, I mean, you have, you don't see much like ghouls, I mean, you see, I mean, or, um, what are they called, I, I forgot, the monsters that are usually at the swamps, I, I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but the monsters that basically, they kind of tend to hang around the, um, the, the beaches or the, the the shore of the of the lakes or something you you see those but not as often you see more of griffins i mean griffins wolves um though vampires i mean because this story is basically it's, it's about vampires which is actually amazing i mean you're not actually you're not actually hunting a, a, a griffin or some type of werewolf or or some type of um some type of creature that can actually uh, can live long or, or it's not like hearts of stone where you're you're bound by some person to go and complete a quest i mean i, I will talk about this more later on but for right now let's talk about the main topic right now which, which is basically the total environment of the game and i mean i don't want to go too long on the environment but i can just tell you the the scenery the grass the trees the, the the background the the blowing of the wind i mean hands down this was the best the best map i've ever been on i mean i don't i don't think i'm ever going to go back to novigrad or there's novigrad and then there's I forgot that other. It's can also connect to the Nova Ground. I mean, even the city. I mean, the way they brought out the colors. I mean, the colors. It's it, it, it's it's all about those colors. I mean, in Nova Ground, you have it kind of dark, kind of have it gray, and, and and basically the colors. The colors is what actually brings out the life in this thing. I mean, if you had this is if you had Tucson, and the colors were of the colors of Nova Ground, you have. Dark red, kind of grayish, musky colors, kind of a of a gray, shadowy type atmosphere. Then it would have would have not looked that nice. But now with Tucson, you have the bright green grass, you have the 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 blue skies, you have the blue water, you have the different mixtures of colors of red, green, purple. I mean, it's supposed to be a, it, this is supposed to be a the place where the wealthy people live. So you can imagine that the people living here will have wealthy, um, nice attire, nice nice clothing, nice furniture. And, and this is exactly what this map does. I mean, it brings out the colors, bring out the life in this thing. Even, even Geralt himself with the dyes that you can actually use in here, you can actually make Geralt look, come up more alive in this place as if you're in Novigrad. And you're just walking around in normal knight's armor or witcher clothing. You look more of a dirty, um, a, a dirty witcher. Not, not, not that way, but more. You look more. I don't know what's the word. It's. You look more basically like you have filth on you, like you've been out there and uh, out there hunting monsters for long periods of time, haven't shaved, haven't taken, haven't showered or something like that. But if you're in Tucson, you have that feeling that he, he's actually living in more comfortable, uh, more comfortable accommodations. I mean, I mean, I can go on for this, but basically, this is that's my point of view on the map and, and basically the whole entire environment of the game. Now. The story. The story. 
beyond amazing. I mean, this story, hands down, is is as is as very compelling as the main story for The Witcher 3: Wild Hunt. Now, Hearts of Stone was all right. I felt like I felt like, in my opinion, it kind of had its it had its up and downs. Where basically you have this peak where everything's super exciting and everything is wow, well, wow, cool. But then you have this, it drops down. And you have this long, slow, mellow part where nothing basically ever happens, and you're, and you're really wanting to skip through all the dialogue. And this game, no, 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 you do not want to skip the dialogue. I mean, the dialogue is. I cannot stress how much, how well done the dialogue was. How, how everything was set. I mean, the way the story was set. The, the, the choices sometimes you made in the main game affect. Certain, certain, certain incidents that happen while you actually are in this in, during this expansion. I mean, for example, in the in the end of my in the end of my main game in The Witcher Three Wild Hunt, I ended up with Triss. Siri came back to me, and basically she became a Witcher. Now, if I would have if I would have not gone with Triss, I would have not received that letter from Triss telling me about a mage, someone who was experimenting on Witcher potions to basically. Um, it was he was trying to basically change his son from being a witcher back to a normal person So he was experimenting on his son by trying to have different potions if I would have not gone with Triss I'm not sure if I would have actually gotten that quest Maybe if I would have gone with Yennefer I would have gotten maybe a diff a more different More different quest or may have not even got that quest at all, but the fact is Certain choices you made in the main game affect certain certain things that happen while you were in the during the expansion. For example, like in like in the video you're actually watching right now, there's this. Th well, I'm not sure if it's actually right now, but somewhere along the lines of the video, you're actually gonna see uh, cl a little clips of actually when Geralt is actually um, competing in a tournament, a knights tournament. He's actually taking play, he's taking replacing a soldier who we actually met at the very beginning. I, I'm not sure if you remember, but this soldier was actually the one who got wounded the who was actually I, I don't remember that it was like the roll the roll the the armadillo I'm calling it the armadillo um the armadillo monster which basically rolled them to a ball and rolled and knocked them the night and etc etc basically we meet this guy up later on in another quest we take his place we compete in the tournaments and at the end at the end of 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 this of this of 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 this of this um tournament you actually have Geralt, can, he, he basically takes the place, he signs a form or whatever, he gets the armor. You can choose between wearing a certain armor that has the name of... I, I, the thing is, certain phrases, I'm not sure if were mentioned, that were actually done in The Witcher 1 or 2 that I'm not aware of. But you actually take it, you take it on a false name, you can either take on a false name as a knight, or you can take on the, 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 the title, Sir Geralt of Rivia. And then you make your oath, your pledge to Triss, um, I forgot his last, her last name, Triss, Triss. Her last name starts with an M. Or Mara, Mara, um, was it Marigold? I don't, I don't quite remember. But you actually pledge your your oath or whatever as a knight, supposedly to Triss, which actually works out very well because the choices I made in the main game, I actually did go with Triss. Now, if I would have not gone with any of them and had that basically that threesome where basically they get both mad at you, I would have not gone with anyone and. I would have been left with Siri, and I probably would have actually pledged my oath to no one, or maybe I would have pledged my oath to my daughter, Siri, basically. But the choices in the game have actually, uh, the, actually, it actually does, because I, I, I got a very, very interesting ending in the in this expansion, Blood and Wine. I mean, my choices I made affected the outcome to where actually the 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 high or the the basically the, the Duchess. Gets killed by her own sister while in the process her sister also gets killed now I don't know if actually what choices I I still do not know what choices I actually well, it might have to do that the fact that I actually killed the the higher vampire guy rather than let him meet um, his, the the Duchess sister because I I'm, the thing is I wasn't sure if he was actually gonna kill her because I do know he was very upset now if I would have if he would have killed her, I have no idea what ending I would have gotten I might actually look it up and see what ending do other people get when they actually let the guy kill if, if he actually even does kill um, the Duchess sister, but then again, I chose not to let that happen. I chose to basically uh, To basically myself to kill the vampire and allow 
the trial or whatever to happen to his sister to the Duchess sister but I didn't count I, I didn't I didn't even expect that actually the Duchess will actually die if I chose to punish her now there's other choices I would have made that I should have made in pre and other and other events or basically you know you had those those two yellow Absolutely when you do when you play the dialogue you have choices you have um basically you can choose which dialogue to say and the yellow ones the yellow icon means basically you have these or this 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 option or this option and either one you choose you can't go back i don't know if i would have chose different options would have had a different ending would the ending may have been different or basically the same outcome the ending though the ending the end now I from from different from different people is that the ending for the gather for the expansion is very different I mean some people end up with meeting Siri other people end up meeting Yennefer for, for me I end up meeting Triss because in the at the end of the main Witcher game I actually ended up with Triss so I never got to see Siri nor Yennefer but I did get to see um, Triss and I as of right now she's all she does is basically sit on the chair and then at night she goes to the your bed it sleeps there and you that's well, basically all she does you could talk to her but you basically talk about the same thing you did at the end of the game but like I was saying the the story was just very very amazing so amazing in fact that I will even actually try to actually replay this expansion to actually get different endings to see which ending I like the best and actually save my game and actually start the new game plus and start all over again that's how that's how great the Witcher 3 story was I mean CD Projekt Red did a great, a great job of with this with this expansion pack on how they actually put everything. I, in my opinion, it, I, I'm not sure if this is actually the case, but I feel like, from what I can tell, I feel like they were like, okay, this is the last, this is the last um, expansion pack. This is the last thing we're gonna ever gonna do for the Witcher Three game. Let's try to go out with a bang and and put as much effort as we can. So by the time the players are done playing this expansion. They're so taken in by the game, they're actually going to go ahead and play the game again and do everything all over again and spend more hours in the game. And who knows, we might actually get more people buying the game because you're going to have people telling friends and friends telling friends, yo, buy The Witcher 3 or get The Witcher 3. This Witcher, the, the Witcher 3 is so amazing. I mean, I feel like that's what they had in mind when they actually did this, it did, when they did this expansion was, we want to go out with a bang make a good expansion pack for the last for the last expansion pack for the witcher 3 and finish this is with a bang so when players are done with this they feel like this game was totally worth it this expansion was a great way to end the witcher 3. now my overall rating on this game i will probably give it a 10 out of 10 hands down 10 out of 10 i mean there's no question doubt about that i'll even go up to 100 out of 100 a thousand out of a thousand a million out of a million i mean the list goes on and on but Honestly, this game, hands down, perfect. I mean, I would recommend this game to anybody. I would, if someone asks me and says, hey, excuse me, do you think this, if I, let's say I'm at Walmart, because they have it at Walmart. If someone comes up and says, excuse me, do you know how good this game is? It's $60. Is The Witcher 3 good? I would say, take it. Take this, take take that. It's worth your sixty bucks. It's worth your six bucks. If this other guy has Call of Duty Black Ops Three, so he's trying to debate, should I get Call of Duty Black Ops Three or The Witcher Three Wild Hunt? And but they're both sixty dollars. I can only get one game. Get The Witcher Three. Who cares about Black Ops Three? Just get that Witcher Three game. I mean, that game is. You're gonna spend more time on that game than you would in Black Ops Three. I mean, you're gonna spend about maybe, I don't know, what. 20 hours or maybe not even 20 hours maybe 10 hours playing the whole campaign of the black ops 3 and then uh, spending what the rest of the time multi well, no i do have black ops 3 now i do have I'm, I'm not criticizing anybody who plays black ops 3 but i'm saying you're probably going to spend less time on black ops 3 campaign maybe more time on the multiplayer but the multiplayer has no story i mean all you do is you're going around and gun guns blazing and shooting everybody now if you get the witch 3 you're going to spend about more, more more way more than 200 hours on that game i mean i haven't even got to 200 hours on that game and i'm still not done i still haven't explored every every single thing in the game like every little single question mark i I'm still not done yet not even every not to, not to even say every single quest i mean the gwent games the 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 finding the armors all the different types of armor sets you can find the witcher armor sets i mean hands down if someone was to ask me between let's say rise of the tomb raider black ops 3 um what is other games that came out fallout 4 um i don't know these other big triple a games i would say get the witcher 3 
You're gonna love The Witcher 3 more than if you would have played Fallout. Unless you're a Fallout fan, I mean, you might want to go with Fallout. But if, you, if, 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 if this is just a, a, a relatively new person to the gaming industry, to the PC gaming industry, and or to the BC gaming community or whatever, and he was looking for, and he's looking for a, 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 a great game or a good game that will actually get him started into playing PC gaming or whatever, and he's debating between, for example, like I said, Black Ops 3 or The Witcher 3, and he's like, I can only pick one game, which one should I pick? I like Black Ops 3, all my friends are playing it, I would say no. Screw your friends, get The Witcher 3. You're going to spend more time on that game, you're going to love it, and who knows, you might, your friends might actually play the game and thank you for it in the end. Now, I will have to say, I, I like I said before, I do have to thank a fellow subscriber of mine, Saitor, who basically actually got me, actually brought me, at, actually opened my eyes to the to the world of The Witcher 3. <laughs> no, he actually, he actually was, he, he did a lot of, um, no, I wouldn't say a lot, but he actually hyped the game pretty good. Enough to get me interested to the point where I, I didn't even know what The Witcher 3 was about. I mean, I even know what The Witcher was about. Hell, I didn't even know what what a what a Witcher was. I knew I knew what a Witcher was, but I didn't know what a Witcher was. I mean, I I mean I I, I haven't even played the first two games, and I'm still I'm still I, I still understand certain things in The Witcher 3. I mean. Even even though I don't have the, the I haven't played the first two games, I still understand sort of stuff. And even with the first two games, with the second game, you're just if you let's say you play the the, the the second game and you beat everything, you can actually choose between if you want your decisions to actually reflect on the main game, which is actually I, I don't think any other game has done that. I mean. I don't think any other game has actually chosen to say, oh yeah, the previous game you played, your decisions you made in there, you can bring them on to the next game and you can actually use those, those decisions will actually reflect in the new game that's coming out. I don't know if actually, if there's any other game that does that, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I, as of right now, I, I don't know if any other game has done that. I mean, this game, hands down, 10 out of 10, would recommend it to anyone. Best game I have ever played. Best game I have ever played in my entire life of playing PC games, just PC games. I've never owned a console, I never owned an Xbox, I never owned a PlayStation, I never owned a Nintendo, I never owned um, an, a, a, a Nintendo DS or a Nintendo DS3 or whatever, or any, or, or, or if, I, freaking, I didn't even, didn't even own a Game Boy for crying out loud. I mean, I never even owned any of those. I've always been on PC since I was little. I mean, since I was little, I had these big old, these big old squared shaped monitors with a big old box of the big old desktop big old dinosaur type desktop computer I've always had PC since I was little so in my entire life of playing PC games I've never had a game so amazing as The Witcher 3. Well guys that about does it for now I mean I can go like, like I said I can go on and on and be talking about the game and end up repeating myself and repeating myself and going over certain topics I said before and then repeating myself and then going on and going on I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to give you a rundown of what I feel was the be what I feel what was great about the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, the Blood and Wine expansion pack, the Heart of Stone expansion pack, even the main game the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I mean, hands down like I said, I mean like like I said right now, I'm repeating myself. Hands down it was a great game. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, also subscribe. Until then, peace out, live long and prosper, and may the force be with you. Also, well, yeah, one more thing. Now that Ubisoft or Ubisoft or I don't know how you the thing is how do you pronounce is it Ubisoft or is it Ubisoft I believe it's Ubisoft you no know, for, for a while I've been calling it Ubisoft anyways now with um, Ubisoft making the Assassin's Creed movie I wonder I'm not sure if there's actually ever a movie that actually came out of The Witcher 3 now I wonder will CD Projekt Red ever make a movie about The Witcher that that would be a great, a great movie. Now, they will have to incorporate basically the first one or or they might actually just do basically they would they will have to do it in a way that it wouldn't be predictable for the people who've played the game and it wouldn't have and would be very it will be interesting for the people who play the game so it's not predictable, but also interesting enough to people who have never played the game can understand it along with a long uh, as long Along with fans who actually played the game, they can understand certain things. Along with also people who've never played the game, they also understand certain things. But that would be a great, a great movie to see. I mean, that would be. I will. 
I, I would spend anything to go see that movie if, if they ever did come up with the Witcher with the Witcher movie. I don't know if they actually did or if they actually came up with the Witcher movie already, an old one, or uh, I don't. I'm not really sure. I know they came up with books, the games that have coming out, but I wonder. I think there's also um, the Witcher Gwent game or something that was announced at E3 or or something like that. I, I really don't know. But at the, at the time of this video being made, um, there's a, I believe there's a. Uh, Witcher Gwent game that's actually coming out sometime. I'm not sure when, but it's basically you just play Gwent. I mean, I I, I never really got into Gwent, but I, I I should get into it. I mean, it looks pretty fun. It looks pretty fun. I just never actually got the time run to play it. But anyways, if they actually did come up with the Witcher three movie, that would be amazing, hands down amazing. Anyways, guys, I took it up much of your time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later.